It's time now for today's Perspective, and this Friday it's all about food. For a good few years now, a revolution has been taking place in the Paris restaurant scene, and you'll of course still find your corner cafe or your local brasserie dishing up all the classics, but little by little, so-called neo-bistros have been cropping up, offering a more casual but nevertheless refined dining experience. Well, joining me here on set are two of the whiz kids of this Paris uh, new wave food scene, Edward Delling Williams and Edouard Lax from the Belleville dining spot Le Grand Bain. Thank you very much for coming in. I know you had a late night maybe uh, at the restaurant last night. Thank you for coming in uh, so early. Edouard, I'm going to start with you. Talk us through how this venture came about and uh, what, what made you decide to put these particular dishes on your menu? Well, we started uh, the project, I think, thinking about this about three years ago. Uh, we, we, just, uh, we are actually three partners with, uh, with the third one, with uh, Alexandre, who's the, who's the architect. We decided that we wanted to do something uh, in a, create a, an, a Western, a cool Western in a, in a, in a, new, in a new area in, a, in Belleville. And, uh, I, hope and uh, I hope it's cool too. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we decided to 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 to, to start the, the adventure about three years ago. It started. We have been open for a year and a half, and um, and yeah, so far, so far, so. Now, Edward, I understand that you are the, the the man in the kitchen, so to speak. Yeah. Talk us through. Uh, we want to get our viewers' taste buds really a tingling this morning. Talk us through one of your <laughs> signature dishes or the best we thing that you're making I'm, at the moment. I don't really have any signature dishes. We have like we do panisse, which is always on the menu, but the menu changes so regularly. Um, we change it every day because we have fresh produce coming every day, fish, vegetables, uh, from su suppliers as local as we possibly can to, uh, to Paris. Um, we do a lot of raw fish. We try and focus on um, vegetables as much as we possibly can. Um, yeah, we do large pieces of meat like lamb shoulders, things like this, pork shoulders. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Edouard, back to you. Um, I've been living in Paris for several years now, and this, this term neo-bistro has been knocking around for a few years now. People watching at home might be like, what on earth does that mean? What does it mean for you? To me, the neo-bistro is just, it's just this, this idea of now going to, uh, to a restaurant that can be just a casual experience with the best possible food and the best possible product. And uh, as far as we're concerned, the best possible wine as well. I think Neo Bistro, it, there's a sense as well of, 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 of this, this idea of taking the classics but just changing everything, especially with, the, with now the, the fact that chefs from all around the world have come to Paris and just reinterpret everything that we have been doing for the, for the past uh, 100 years. Now, some of my friends might call you uh, bobos for being maybe on a trend, trying to be too cool for school. What would you say to those kind of criticisms? Um, I don't think so. I think we're true to our, our core values, which is, um, you know, like Edward just said, we're trying to do the best possible price for the best possible food that we can. We like to go into work, we're just doing a job. Um, perhaps we could be seen as gentrifying places like Belleville, but uh, we went there because we really love that area and I, we personally think that it won't change that dramatically, you know. Now Edward, you've worked of course in some of the best restaurants in London under one of my favourite chefs, that's uh, Fergus Henderson at, yeah. uh, at St John. What are the differences between working in a restaurant in London or a kitchen in London and a kitchen in Paris? Um, uh, <sighs> The hours can be relatively, relatively different. There's, a, there's more of a, a way. Is there more of a, a, a sense of freedom maybe in Paris compared to? Uh, definitely with the, with the terms of workload and, uh, and, and time. There's amazing produce here. There's fantastic produce. Also, it's kind of a bit of a chef's dream to be here. You know, any, anyone in the world will say that they want to work in Paris. Um, but also the, the, the base level of people that come in and eat have a, have a have a fairly good knowledge of wine and food, so they have a, people appreciate when you do something quite good. Now you're an Englishman like me, and I often get my French friends saying, English food is bland, you can't eat it, there's no real uh, food culture where we come from. What do you say to those detractors here in France that say that English food isn't worth eating? Uh, I, think, I think you should go. I think people should start going to London. It's only two, it's two and a half. It's, 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 over the last 10 years, it's more than that, 15 years, it's rapidly, rapidly become one of the major food uh, capitals of the world. Uh, and it's not far. By Eurostar, it's only you know, two and a half hours. And, 
Uh, it is. There's so much food there. There's so much. It's such a multicultural city that the diversity of food and uh, the pricing, the different pricings of food, is is, is incredible. You should. And, um, Edouard, you brought in some of your treats for us. Um, you also, as well as having a restaurant, have a bakery. Yeah, we have opened the bakery Le Petit Grain in the, in the same street, a few few meters away and from the restaurant. To an average Parisian bakery that you'd find on every street corner. Well, it's 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 it's. For us, it's the same mentality that we had with the restaurant in terms of we wanted to do uh, again the same, the best products that we could at the best price. Uh, it's all bread uh, using all the breads are using um, organic uh, flour from uh, coming from Ile de France, um, and uh, and uh, it's just pain au levain, so no no chemicals, just natural, just flour, water, and uh, and salt, and. Uh, and, uh, and the breads, the breads are, would be deemed classically French, whereas the pastries, the pastry sides are more a, a melange of, of, of all the places that we've been and all the things that we like to eat. So, for example, here we have a quinoa. Um, From Brittany, my favourite. Exactly, <laughs> and then, then but right next to it we have a little uh, marshmallow fluff peanut and caramel tart, which is very American. We have time for just one more question. Do either of you have any guilty food pleasures after a hard day in the kitchen do you ever go home and do what i do and eat nutella from a spoon or do you have anything weird that you do when you get home well i think i think there's one place that would that would definitely we could call out it's called zaatar and they do this <laughs> massive falafel sandwich and uh anybody who's who, 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 should go there. yeah should go and have yeah. a, a big falafel sandwich yeah OK, Edouard and Edward from Le Grand Bain here in Paris, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us here on France thank 24. You very much. Thank you very much. You're watching Live from Paris. A quick recap now for you of our main world headlines. Breakthrough in Brussels after burning the midnight oil and after nine hours of chaotic talks, EU leaders finally agree to a common text on migration at their latest summit. And even the Italian Prime Minister, who threatens to throw a spanner in the works, says that he's happy. Five people are dead and several others injured in yet another U.S. mass shooting. The officers of a newspaper are targeted in Maryland, with police saying the gunman went looking for his victims. The suspect, who's now in his 30s, is in custody.